नमस्कार भुज शिकार दे मध्य नमकार पद
We didn't have an announcement uh, prior to the first piece because we just wanted to start uh, on the soundscape of Chennai, soundscape of Tamil Nadu, and uh, the auspicious beginning that uh, the Tavil is known for. And uh, today, Sunil, the son of a great Tavil Vidwan, triplicate and shaker, he played for us, and uh, he's going to be starting from the next piece accompanying on the kanjira so thank you so much for that amazing start thank you um we go on uh, to the sort of main piece of uh, today's performance um the the theme for today rather uh, the title for today's performance is paravartana just my reflection on where i am um in my seeking as an artist and uh, i think the next piece sort of um, <clears throat> very concisely uh, encapsulates uh, my period of uh, isolation and uh, illness during the pandemic. Um, so I, I know we all dealt with it in different ways. You know, some wanted to go out there and just be more active than ever. Some just went into a shell. I was one of those who just completely went into a shell. It just didn't make sense to me, the world, at that point. Um, but it was great. The two years of just quiet, no noise, pure reflection, I think, uh, helped me um, become a much better person. And this particular song is just encapsulating that journey. Although it's written by Tyagaraja, I feel like, you know, a lot of times when we look at Tyagaraja's Kritis or Shyama Shastris or Dikshitas, they just seem very esoteric and far-reached and far out there. But um, I think as we go along and mature as people, as human beings, especially Tyagaraja's voice, maybe also because I'm partial and I'm Telugu and just those words ring better in my ears, um, I think churn within you in a very different way. This song is first uh, what I heard uh, Musiri sir sing, Endu um, Dagi Nadu in Ragam Todi. Uh, not very often sung in the concert platform. I know some people sing it, but um, one of the rarer Kritis in Todi. Here Tyagaraja says, where are you hiding, O Rama? So I think the trials and tribulations and the churning that Tyagaraja went through as a human is something we all go through, but maybe we, <laughs> we don't uh, find words to articulate the way he did and in the profound todi the way he does it. But uh, here when he's saying, he's like, he's, he's suffering his own mental pangs and anguish. And the fact that his mind just can't seem to stay steady on the one thing, which is his devotion to Rama. For him it was Rama, for us it can be anything. For me it was just... Um, I think just finding a way to be devoted and surrendered to life itself um, um, in a way 
where my ego doesn't come in the way. And I think Tyagaraja is also saying the same thing in this. He says, where are you hiding? You know, I keep hearing that you're there everywhere. You come out to uh, protect Prahalada. You come out to um, protect all your devotees. But the beauty of this composition is that Tyagaraja and his mind go back and forth in conversation. So first Yagraja says, where are you hiding? And then his mind responds and says, hey, enduku chapalamu, why are you all so stressed out and, you know, uh, running here and there, searching for me everywhere? Calm, quiet, quiet in that noise first in your head. And then when you find some quietitude, maybe you'll find me inside you. And I'm meant to be hiding for a reason. So he says, why is this hiding, first of all? And he says, yeah, even for Prahlada, you came hiding. Even for Sugriva, sorry, Vali, when you killed, you came in hiding. He says, I can't be uh, just visible to you every time. I have to stay hidden till you clear the clouds of your own existence and the maya that's shrouding you with your ego, with your pride, with your greed, your lust. And all of these are not enemies that are outside of you in another human. They're just within you and the other human is merely reflecting that. And the more you dig inside you and then you find that every single one of these attributes has clouded you to a point where that delusion has completely taken you away from your own self. And when you're away from your own self, I will be hiding, I will not be there at all. Until you can remove that, until you can clear those clouds out, you won't see me. Till then, I'll only appear hidden. It is deep, but this is my truth of today. And I feel, um, personally for myself, my art has to reflect my life experience. It, um, yes, we practice a traditional form that has a traditional format, yet, the tradition is not something that's stuck in stone. I mean, this is, I think, the travails of Tyagaraja even in the 17th century. And me as a sort of 21st century modern woman, uh, half in India, half in America, half everywhere in the world, still relates to the same idea that he went through or the pangs that he went through. And I think that's the beauty of our art, the beauty of our tradition. The fact that it's timeless and the fact that it can and it is interpretable at every stage in our lives. We just have to find it for ourselves, within ourselves. Endu Daginado, this is in Ragam Todi in Mishra Chaputalam. And uh, this is our humble first attempt. We'll see how it goes. Thank you.
to that heavy duty soul searching we'll come to something more fun <laughs> something more every day i think every situation can become as deep as we want it to uh, maybe i'm just a little crazy in that aspect i try to go to the deepest truth of what even a simple thing <laughs> uh, any simple thing that happens in my life but so the next two uh, pieces that we are presenting is um, a javali followed by a padam so we've strung it together in a way um, that sort of makes sense <laughs> so in the javali this is a kapi javali of puchi shrinivas aingar vadani nen anti nigavani i'm sure many of you uh, uh, might have heard of it very fun so the sakhi in this javali yelling at her friend saying um, i told you that guy was pretty uh, tadiyo mosa gadu i i don't know how to translate that in uh, english tadiya is like the third day of the moon so like even if the first two days the moon doesn't come out the third day for sure it's going to come but this guy is such a fraud that even on the third day he doesn't show up so it's like he's absolutely inconsistent so she says that kind of a guy he is vakanaga maatladchu vakanaga is like a fox he is as cunning as a fox he talks like that i had warned you the day i saw him i saw him and i knew edo seri illa in the paalu paatharile edo seri illa na anike solliten nee ivanoda pogadana nee kekala ipo nee sir you suffer na but the naika in this so both the javali and then the padam that follow are to do with a conversation with the sakhi so the naika in this particular javali she is the younger one you know she is she falls for this guy who is very charming you know he probably dresses very well wears great cologne and she falls for him obviously she is a young one naive in a sense so the sakhi can take her uh, uh, her uh, i guess uh, liberty with this naika and yell at her but the response that comes in the padam it is not directly linked this padam has no connection but i have wanted to do it together just to show how when the same naika matures into a much older woman 
how she responds to the same situation rather a similar situation perhaps that guy was not a vakanaga he was not a cunning fox but he was still somebody who deceived her who rather at least he came to her with love and then he disappeared so the mature naika she says to the sakhi in the padam that will follow in saveri le maro ma muvva gopalu dendena lesa yuntide chalune she says my dear friend wherever muvva gopala is if he is happy i am fine i am satisfied i don't need much more than the fact that wherever he is let him be well i am well i have moved on so now in a mature state how does a woman handle the same emotional situation as a younger girl she is hurt and she is crying and you know she is like oh, okay yeah i got you know cheated by this guy but as a more mature woman she is she is trying to process this hurt this hurt that i think we all experience in our close relationships and um, of course like all every one of us most of us rather she tries to rationalize it from the intellect the hurt and says you know wherever he is may he be well you know we have uh, moonlight when nela chikati both exist in our lives she is very philosophical the first few lines but somewhere deep within her heart she hasn't processed that hurt she hasn't gotten past that hurt it's still there some corner of her heart that is still longing for this man who has probably left her for whatever reason and then in the last charanam she goes and says um you know he actually has a heart like that of butter but for some reason he has hardened his heart and he is no longer coming to me and uh, unfortunately that's my fate as of today but again she comes back and she says i have to move on because that's how life is life is a i like to look at life as a, a ball game you know it goes up it goes down and the harder we fall the higher we rise the higher we go the harder we fall and uh, and she tries to process her hurt that way so we'll do a javali in kapi followed by a padam in saveri i won't announce in between we do have a fun tilana right after but we'll see how we do on time if we are running short of time we may cut it or cut it short so we'll see how it goes after the padam thank you <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you all. A quick thank you for being here. And uh, once we finish what we planned, we will, um, uh, I'll introduce the artist and then we'll move on to the next program. Thank you so much. This Tilana is Ragam Hamsanandi, uh, Adi Talam, a composition of Muteya Bhagavatar.
like to introduce, uh, I won't say the musicians, I would say the lifeline of whatever you saw today, um, Ranjani Ramakrishnan on the vocal, please. And Srimati Jayashree Ramanathan on the Nattu Bangam, a very senior disciple of my guru, Sri Vipi Dhananjayan. I have very fond memories of her since childhood and tours and everything. I think all of them. <laughs> Ramesh Babu on the Mridangam. Again, uh, I don't know, we've been collaborators and friends and art co-artists since I think 25 years <laughs> or more. So please give him a great round of applause. And there are probably very few artists who can um, adapt to playing to dance and a very strong um, sort of, I think, Carnatic phrases, like Kacheri phrases, um, through the dance. It's kind of tricky to do both at the same time. But I think he handles it so deftly and so beautifully. Uh, truly, I would say, a lifeline of this entire uh, team. Rajesh Gopalakrishnan on the violin. Again, a multifaceted artist. Yesterday, he played Kanjira. Today, he's on the violin. And Sunil Kumar on the Kanjira and Tavil earlier. Oh, and myself, of course, I think it's funny being the curator and performer, but thank you. <laughs> and this is, yeah, this is for the artist of the evening, Divya Devgupta. <laughs> 